Hey there, this is Robbie Jeanette with Keyboard Magazine. I'm standing here with David Rosenthal, Billy Joel's longtime uh, keyboard player and synth programmer, and we're going to get a little tour of his world. David, thank you so much for having us here. My pleasure. And uh, we're going to look through his keyboard rig, starting, uh, I guess, with the well, Kurzweil. I guess, yeah, we can start up in the front here. Uh, the main keyboard here that I'm using in the front is a Kurzweil K2600X. Uh, pretty much using it as a controller, although I do have um, a lot of the sounds programmed into it to use it standalone should the whole rig go down. But I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, basically the flow that's happening here is I have an iPad that's doing the program changes. I'm using Unreal Book and I'm able to, with this, set up um, the program change, which sends a program change to the uh, 2600, and the 2600 sends it to the whole rig, which is down there, which Great. we will talk about either yeah. before. And so, how does that work? After you, this said, or does it, you said it had a MIDI patch with it, or right? So um, this here, if we look in, I don't know if you're gonna be able to capture this. Come, <laughs> come on in a little closer. Come on in. So in this program, I, what I did is I have a PDF that represents each song. It's this is just a title. The program is meant to have charts. Um, but you can use just any kind of PDF. So I have a description, I have the song title, and then I have the main stage patch number, and then the Kurzweil patch number. That's where the stuff, where the, my sounds reside in the 2600, and where it resides in main stage. Um, and that's just in case everything were to die and I had to enter it manually, I right. have the information I need right there. Then if you go here, when I call this, when I call this up, it actually sends out a little str uh, MIDI stream here. And which you have to program in hex, which is a little bit of a pain. Okay, it's a lot of a pain. <laughs> well, you know how to do that. <laughs> well, I sat there and played with it, and I, I built it a spreadsheet in Excel okay. that, uh, that, that, um, that converts regular program change numbers into hex numbers and spits out what I needed to program. Wow. It. So um, <laughs> it t I had to th think about that for a minute, and once Indeed. I had it in there, then I would just bump back in and out of Excel. And it works and flawlessly. It, it works flawlessly, yeah. So, so basically what this is doing is just sending out the program change to uh, here, and anything else that I want to happen when I call the song up comes from here. And then uh, each, each song get, gets its own um, MIDI string attached to it. Cool. So all the songs are represented in here, and then you can program them in in the order of the set list. Fantastic. Uh, and then I just basically step through the whole set list from here like this, and it changes everything. Changes from here. main stage as it goes. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, we're actually, this is actually a screen sharing computer. We're not actually, this is not where main stage is running, but you can see what's going on from here. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Awesome. So I have two of these, um, just flipping through some of these. Uh, programs here, see how it works, it's pretty neat, you can go forward and backwards. Um, and I have two of these, I have one here and I have one over here. Both of these are live okay. and they're being merged together to send the program change here. Should this one die or any problem happen, I can change my programs from here. Great. And I have the set list programmed into this one and I have it programmed to that, but this one lives on an all songs set list. So every song is there. Should he call out a song that is not in the set, I can jump right over to here how and jump right to the song. How does that happen? Does he? Uh, it happens, yeah. It does? Yeah. I mean, sometimes he gets in a moment and right. the set list becomes a suggestion. I mean, the show the other <laughs> night was cool because in between songs he'd do a little class or did that Elton John song? Yeah, and, and that's all off the cuff stuff. Cool. So he could go wherever he wants, and if you know, the band picks it up. We, you yeah, we, jump right we, in. Uh, we got to stay on his toes. So awesome. also in this, uh, I have at the end of. Um, hang on a second. I'll just jump over to this. In my end of my all songs list, every song is in here, and at the end of this list here, I have my alphabetized patch list, which shows every song, and on one side it's a chart of the main stage patch and, and the Kurzweil patch, the same information that appears here, right. but should I have to, for some reason, look it up really quickly, I can jump over to here, there's three pages, and it's all, all the information I need to... Uh, what, what's uh, amazing is, uh, not that you right there. Uh, were able to do this, but that you were able to think this. Uh, we talked about the efficiency of your, your routing, and um, I'm just curious, like, you know, when you get into a, a problem or an issue, uh, do you have a, a go-to, like a, a person you call, or have you been, been able to really like... Well, I, I have a lot of people that I can call <laughs> for questions. Well, actually, it's a handful of people. this is deep. Yeah, it is pretty deep. And, uh, but, and it's also, I kind of, uh, you know, figure out what I need to do and then find right. a way to do it. Yeah. And in the uh, previous generations of this rig, I had the mitigators doing the same basic idea. Right. Um, but I needed to sort of get into the modern era here. And, and uh, also, I finally got away from using the Studio 5s, and the whole rig now lives in main stage. Cool. So, um, and main stage and receptor. 
receptors, and it's working great. But it took a lot of uh, playing around from this main to stage that. receptors, solid state drives, and Thunderbolt. That's the that's the trick right there. That's the trick. Yeah, because I had put the whole thing together initially with main stage and uh, Firewire and conventional hard drives. I got the whole thing set up, and it didn't work. I couldn't keep up with my playing, and it would wow. choke. And then I switched it right over to Thunderbolt and solid state drives, both internal in the laptops and external. And as soon as I did that, the whole the whole thing worked. Awesome. So it was really, we t you know, technology turned a corner, I think, in the last year. With, technology with caught up to your brain. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, so here, keep going with the, uh, the tour here. Sure. Okay, so uh, the, on the pedals here, what we have is, uh, this is my uh, ink and dink, <laughs> as I ink call them. Uh, it's uh, increments and decrements, any of the programs, which I can do manually. Basically, the iPad calls up the first patch of the song. If it's a song that use most, uses multiple patches, I change them within the song from here. How often do you have to do that, or is everything pretty much set? No, I try. I try to do each song as one big setup whenever it's possible. Right. But there's probably, you know, maybe out of the 81 songs I have programmed, maybe there's 10 or so, 12 songs that have multiple changes within them, just because there's so many parts what that would, go on. What would be a like a an example of a change that you would do with the ink and dink pedals that you would have to do uh, well, during like, the show? For example, on Italian restaurant. Uh, the intro is played here, and um, perhaps I can demonstrate this a little yeah, bit later. Yeah, we'll, we'll do but, that. Uh, uh, the intro is played here, and then in this, in the, which is accordion and strings, uh, which is set up here. The strings are down below, and the accordion on, on there. And then I jump to the next patch. The next part of the song is the uh, gotcha. you know, the setup to the Brenda and Eddie part. Yep. Um, and then I play that with this, and then I go to the Dixieland, which is the the tuba, the trombone, and the clarinet. Yep. And so on and so forth. And so this this song has a lot of patches because there's so many different parts of the song. Right, right. Then it gets to the Brenda and Eddie section, which I do on the organ here and some strings, and then I get back to here the uh, the big brass thing when it yep. when it does goes back to the reprise, uh, and that's the setup for that. And then it. Uh, uh, back to the accordion, which is the intro patch, but I keep going in order, so I don't have to skip around. I just keep going, you gotcha. know, even though I'm using the same patch later in the song, I keep stepping in order, Good. so there's no chance for error. I just know I have to change the program here, right. and, I, and I hit it, Fantastic. and then finish the song on this. So this this one has a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I was, that's one of the ones that while uh, I was watching the show, I was watching you specifically because as it changed from part to part, you know, you're you're right on it, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, well thanks. So, so then uh, let's keep going down yeah, below. Yeah, sure. So this is the volume, and this is the sustain. Um, this here is my talkback mic here when I'm uh, running rehearsals, right. and I need to talk to the band or whatever, and uh, and that, and I turn this on, and then and it turns on the mic here so that this mic isn't live all the time, right? So that you're not picking, it's not picking up the ambience. So during a show, if there's something you had to communicate to the band, you could do that, and it would be in their ears, correct? Kind of thing. Yeah, Beautiful. but I usually don't talk during the show, but right. it's more for running rehearsals and stuff. Gotcha. Um, now this here. Uh, the other part of the tour we'll do w d down below, but basically this is my AB switchers, the remote switchers for the two radial uh, uh, SW8 Mark IIs that I'm using. Okay. The first one switches between my two main stage systems, systems, and so this is how I can switch between A and B. There, it's it's a, it's switching all the outputs. Right. They're both running all the time in in tandem. Floating. Yeah, in real time, everything yeah. is running, and then if I had, if for some crazy wacky reason both main stage Systems right. crashed, which hasn't happened. But if, if it goodness. did, if it did, I could jump to the Kurzweil and use only it because I do have all the sounds programmed in. They're not quite as uh, elaborate, but I could get through uh, a, a song show. or two. And or, you've done or some corporate gigs with just the Kurzweil. Exactly. When we do a w quick one-off, just a you know yeah. a quick corporate gig, I'll just usually take this. Um, so you yeah. actually have three backups. You have both two main stages with the, the Muse receptors floating in tandem, working, so if one goes down, you can switch the other one, and then if both goes down, you can switch the Kurzweil, correct. and it's seamless. Now, correct, and now the early, in the early days of main stage, before I had all uh, 81 songs programmed, right. and I started doing gigs, and I had like 25, 30 songs, and then 40, and I was working my way up. Right. So if he were to call at that time one of the songs that I didn't have programmed yet, I would jump to this. To the Kurzweil, Because I, right. I could get through any song, you know, from right. stuff that I have in here, from moving out, while I, I you know, put all the sounds in here in those days, so cool. there's a lot a lot of years of programming in this and I have access to that. So this is the second um, radial SW8 and I can switch here. This switches between whichever main stage rig is active and the Kurzweil. So if I do that, now the Kurzweil's outputs are become live. Perfect. But I also have to do this and that turns the MIDI off that comes out of this going to main stage. Gotcha. So I don't send all kinds of who knows what commands right. to main stage. Uh, which, which, because these songs were not meant to be controller 
used as a controller gotcha. for main stage. Gotcha. So that way that enables that. And then now once once MIDI is turned off from here, then I can freely go around here and not worry about sending any erroneous MIDI commands to Fantastic. main stage. Fantastic. And that so that's there, and that turns tells me when it's in that mode. And then panic is all notes off on all MIDI channels in case I get a stuck note. All notes off. Everybody needs a panic button. Everybody, if you if you've played keyboards long enough, you're going to have a stuck note situation. And if you don't have a it, panic switch, yeah, it happens. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, but when it happens, oh man, you need a panic switch. Yeah, yeah. So um, fantastic. 